Are men and women actually different on a neurological level? Anthony and Lacey here for D News, and a new study was just released showing that men's brains are better at acoustic size judgment. USA, USA. Are you, you telling me that you can tell how big someone is based on their voice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's really a big win. And honestly, like, what are they basing that on? Six foot three, huh. no. You know, that is an excellent question. You know, we see a lot of these studies about men and women supposedly being wired differently, right? Like, you hear men are better at math than spatial relationships, and women are better with language, and they're better worriers than men. Yeah, my brain is better at worrying. Like, what does that even mean? I wouldn't worry about it. We're just wired differently, Lacey. We are a different species. Yeah, we're, we are different in some ways, especially physically, just like there are physical differences between races, but physical differences don't mean that our brains are wired differently. I love a good study as much as the next guy, but we sometimes forget that there are regular people behind these studies. Sure. We like to think that science is always objective, that social and cultural and personal biases will never affect research or experiments. That's true. I think there's uh, great examples throughout history of different types of studies that look at a person's race or their sexual orientation or their sex and are like, this group of people is this way and here's why. Yeah, like the Psychology of the Negro study in 1916 where the researcher concluded that the color of skin and the crookedness of the hair prove that black slaves were less moral than white people. This is a scientist. Yeah, they're like busy proving how morally superior they are with science. Meanwhile, these dudes think it's totes cool to own people. There was another study too in 1906. It was even published in the American Journal of Anatomy. They let this thing through. It claimed that the Negro brain was smaller than the Caucasian brain. Debunked a million times over. That is not good science, dude. Yeah, it's not. And that study was actually generalized to include women and poor people, too. So the researcher basically claimed that every group of people was biologically inferior to rich white men. We also saw this with homosexuality. It wasn't until 1973 that homosexuality was no longer considered a serious mental illness. That is not long enough ago. No, it really isn't. And I mean, those homophobic mentalities are still with us today. Just look at the scientifically bunk gay rehab therapy that are based on the idea that gay kids are psychologically disturbed. Yeah. So coming back to the hardwired sex differences, many of these differences are learned. So from day one, you know, you have boys that are given toys like the Mad Science Lab mm -hmm. and video games and sports, which all improve spatial reasoning. And as he's growing up, all the famous scientists on TV look just like him because they're male. And his school teachers believe that boys are better at girls than science and he's given extra support while girls are steered and said toward things that are like language -y and spoken word. Yeah, we actually saw a study about how subconscious biases affect the success of girls versus boys in science a few months ago. Yeah, it did a D News on it. So these are just a few examples of the things that absolutely have the power to make gender stereotypes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it doesn't mean that we have like these rigid, hardwired, different brains. It means that we also have different socialization. Yes, and that socialization could actually be the reason that we are seeing what look like physical differences right. in the brains of men and women, because it's all about neuroplasticity. Your brain is always growing, it's always changing, it's drawing new pathways, it's responding to new information. If you keep repeating the same tasks or practicing the same thing, your brain physically changes in response. It's extremely malleable early on in life. So you're learning to speak and move and interact and stay alive. And your brain just rapidly custom builds itself to make you the optimal person for your day-to-day -day existence. Yeah, and then that growth slows down as you get older and it becomes harder and harder for your brain to make changes in this way. So it's complicated, okay? But I think these are things that we should be thinking about, especially when we're hearing claims that sound sneakily like things that are used to generalize um, about a group of people. Right, so are the studies wrong or are we studying the wrong things? Are we looking at the cause of things or are we just looking at effects? So you should let us know what you think down below and subscribe so you can get more D-News.